Ask Reddit by Penire23. What are some cooking hacks you swear by? Revive veggies that have lost their water by cutting their edges and soaking them in cold water. Lettuce, carrots, celery will be crisp again. Old produce guy here. Lukewarm water is best, then refrigerate. The warm water makes the plant cells open more to absorb more water, while the refrigerator makes them harden to retain water and crisp. A quality set of scissors will save you so much hassle. They should be able to disassemble at the hinge point for cleaning purposes. If your food is bland even though you've added salt then it's missing acidity. Lemon juice, lime juice, or vinegar are easy additions. If you wanna splurge, champagne vinegar or prosecco vinegar is fucking delicious in just about anything as a finishing acid. I use soy sauce in a lot of stews and soups to help bring out savory flavors. My minestrone, for instance, usually has some soy sauce in it. Similarly, unsweetened cocoa powder. I add this to stews and chilies and it adds a rich depth of flavor and no one can pick out cocoa. Not mine, but my wife browns the butter before she adds it to chocolate chip cookie dough and they're the best freaking cookies I've ever eaten. Deleted. Leaving a potholder on the handle of a cleaned cast iron pan to let anyone who might put it away know it may be hot as it cools down. Ditto for any skillet that comes out of the oven after roasting or braising. A towel immediately goes over the handle to remind myself not to instinctively go for the handle. I always take my cookies out of the oven a couple minutes or so before they are supposed to come out. They still cook a little bit when they are cooling on the pan, and as a result they come out nice and soft. I do this but also at the instance I smell them. It works out well every time. Trust the cooling process. Easy one clean while you cook. Absolutely. Starting off with an empty sink and dishwasher ready to go to load while I'm cooking has been a game changer. Knives, get good knives and a sharpener. And never, ever put them in the dishwasher. Hand wash them until someone inherits them years later. When making stuffed shells by hand, mix the filling in a zip top bag, then cut a corner off and use it as a makeshift piping bag to fill the shells. Have a cheat sheet for times things go in the oven and how long it takes so you can prepare side dishes to go with the entree. This is a great one. I bake veggies all the time, but can never remember the perfect temp and time for each one individually. I made a little reference sheet for this and posted it on the fridge. Scanning my bookmarks or Pinterest to find that particular recipe's cooking process was always annoying and often arised at the most inopportune times. Find a seasoning blend you like, pre-blended or not, if not, make your own blend ahead of time for ease, and put it in everything. Well, not everything, but a lot of things, and use your own judgment on how much of it for each dish, but even a little sprinkle can really do wonders. Silpit or knockoff silpit mats are amazing, I've used both the actual brand and random ones from Costco, no difference. Put one down on your baking sheet. Bake away, mats are super easy to clean and you'll have very little cleanup on the baking sheet itself. I never end up following this, but clean as you go. Also my grandma thought us this trick if you made the meal, or most of it, sit down for a bit before you eat, maybe have a glass of water or something while you wait. You'll relax and break the cooking mode and be able to go in to enjoy the meal mode. She cooked for 5 kids and a husband in addition to herself so she knew the value of it. Do you not like vegetables but want to learn to love them? Roast that shit. Roasted veggies are like ambrosia of the gods. They taste amazing, require virtually no prep, and go with everything. Edit, as a secondary hack boil your dense root vegetables before roasting if you are trying to get a crunchy exterior. Boiling something like a potato heats it evenly and causes moisture to be lost via steam as you let it cool. The result is a drier potato that will crisp more evenly and requires less time in the hot oven. You can toss about any veg with oil, 
season with salt and pepper, and other stuff like garlic salt, paprika etc if you're feeling frisky, bake in the oven and it comes out so much tastier than your plain steamed veg. Pretty much every soup can use a little drop of lemon juice. I'm not sure what meal can't. Deleted. Essential for cooking meats too. If it doesn't sizzle when it hits the pan the pan is not hot enough. Also. Don't use olive oil for high temp pan cooking. Olive oil is fragrant and useful as a garnish or dressing. Olive oil has a relatively low smoke point and will burn turn better if you cook it too hot. Avocado or grapeseed oil is better for meats in a pan. Box chocolate cake use cooled brewed coffee instead of the water. Richens the flavor so much. I do it with boxed brownies too. Boxed cakes in general have a whole lot of hacks. My wife has this book called Cake Mix Magic. Every recipe in the book is basically just take a cake mix, ignore what its directions say and do this instead. But it's pretty surprising how different they come out. Put a damp paper towel under your cutting board to prevent it from sliding around when you are cutting. I got one of the rubber things to help open jars. I put that under my cutting board and it works really well as a non-slip option. Damp paper towel sounds good to assist with cleanup. Freeze anything with liquid when there is extra. Open a tomato paste and need 1 TB. Freeze the rest of the can in a flattened ziplock. Break a piece off when needed. Extra gravy from Thanksgiving? Freeze it. Make extra sauce on pasta night and freeze the rest. Now you don't have to settle for jarred stuff when having more sticks. Open a pineapple juice can for 2 ounces. Freeze the rest in 1 ounce increments. Leftover creamed spinach? Freeze it and either eat later or add to scrambled eggs for the best scrambled eggs you've ever had. Opens a tomato paste and needs 1 terabyte. Do similar tasks all at once. Making potatoes and carrots? Peel both first, then chop. Don't do one veg and then the other. You'll have a better rhythm with your tools and you'll only have to change tools once instead of three times. Breaking down a pack of chicken thighs? Do all the skins and fat at once, all the bones at once, then all the slicing at once. Also, keep a damp rag next to your cutting board for cleaning your board and knife, and keep a dry rag over your shoulder for drying or wiping anything as needed. This saves a ton of trips over to the sink and or towel holder. MSG Fuai op Taste as yakuk Ah yes, the raw chicken tastes raw If it's bland, add salt If it tastes good but is missing something, add acid, lemon juice, hot sauce, some type of vinegar, etc If food is missing something, my go to list of some things to try are 1 Washi sister sauce. 2. Lemon juice. 3. Brown sugar. 4. Paprika or chipotle. Deleted. I realize this but sometimes my hands get so cold they are numb but it's easy to dice chicken when frozenish. Clean as you cook. Especially with a small apartment kitchen, it makes it so much easier. Boiling stuff in broth instead of water. Rice, potatoes etc. When making mashed potatoes, boiling them in chicken stock seriously makes a world of difference. If you are a vegetarian, you can use vegetable broth. It makes things much more flavorful. If you are making a savory dish that uses crushed minced garlic, reserve a little bit of the fresh garlic and stir it into the dish right before serving. The fresh garlic adds a bit of a pop that you lose if it's cooked. Maybe it's just my tastes but a lot of recipes tend to lean on the lower side of how much garlic to use. I haven't come across a recipe yet where two cloves of garlic is too much so that's always my starting point in anything I cook. I'll add more them next time I make it if it's still not enough. I once was going to cook potato gratin and they called for two cloves for a four person serving. That's not nearly enough. 
ice cube in the center of your leftover rice before you microwave it makes the rice get soft and fluffy again. Is an ice cube even necessary? I just dribble a bit of water into the rice before reheating and get the same effect, I think. Butter. That's it. That's the whole tip. Use more butter. Don't forget about cream, too. Using it instead of milk for French toast brings it up a notch. I also like to use sourdough bread to give it an extra zing to balance the richness. You can add green onions to almost everything. Also, plant the roots in dirt and they will continue to give, surprisingly quick too. Rinse your sauce jars with a bit of water to clean them out and not waste any sauce. If you buy jarred pasta sauce, add just a few tablespoons of water to the jar after you dump it and put the lid back on give it a few brisk shakes and amp, dump it with the rest of the sauce. Also on board with the clean while you cook crew. Far easier than having a ton of mess afterwards. And clean everything don't just give the stuff a top a swipe. If you have a gas stove, take the burner grates off and clean around the burners, etc and if the grates are dirty, give those a wash as well. Grease and damp, dirt build up fast in these areas and that's how you end up with a crusty stuff a top. Microwaving broccoli is not only okay to do, it can also preserve the most amount of nutrients than any other method of cooking it. This is just easier steamed broccoli. Using almond extract in addition to vanilla when baking. It absolutely enhances the flavor. Note though, a little goes a long way. Definitely not equal parts, but I do agree. Something missing from your tomato pasta sauce? Add a splash of Worcestershire sauce. Makes it taste rich and fuller. Microwaving potatoes before I roast them. Adding cacao powder to your beef stew for some extra depth. When you get a roaster chicken at the store, make your own broth with the bones and carcass when you're done. It's time consuming, but it honest to god makes wherever you cook it smell like home. This is basically 90% of my motivation for roasting smoking a turkey for Thanksgiving. After we eat, the bones go in a pot for broth, and the next day is turkey noodle soup day. Using gingerbread spice set in banana bread. Prep everything before you start cooking. If it's missing something but you don't know what, then add a pinch of salt or a splash of acid. Whoever didn't cook cleans up afterwards. If a veggie grows underground, put it in the pot before it comes to a boil. Any other veggie, and everything else, spaghetti, instant ramen, rice, meat, seafood, put it in when it is boiling. Edit, not rice I why I said that. Don't fry bacon on a stove. Place the strips on a cookie sheet. Throw in the oven at about 400 until the done as you like. Use parchment paper or aluminum foil and there is virtually no cleanup. I started using the oven for bacon about 3 years ago and I've never pan fried since. You don't have to worry about getting hit with hot grease although the oven does get a little greasier. Wiping it out with diluted white vinegar while still warm helps. Hard boiled eggs. Steam them in a veggie basket and they peel perfectly, no old eggs or new eggs trick or anything. Steam for 13 minutes and put in cold water 98% success rate. On the subject of peeling, use a teaspoon to peel ginger. The skin just scrapes off. It is so much easier and I waste way less ginger. Not everyone cooks, my advice. Take the time to learn how to cook from scratch or raw ingredients. Learn this as early as you can. You will eat better food and enjoy it far more by knowing exactly what's in it and how it was made. As an added bonus it's far cheaper in terms of monetary output. You still pay with your time but your overall quality of life will greatly improve. Starting with rice and beans and slowly working my way up has been really helpful in keeping prices low since I can buy both in bulk and doctor it with whatever I can afford at the time. Buy a bag of MSG. It's not bad for you. 
a pinch of MSG can really help round out a dish. Put some pasta water in your spaghetti sauce and reduce it a little before you serve. The starch helps the sauce stick to the noodles. You should really be finishing the noodles in the sauce anyway. Take a trip to your local Asian international food market. Use a meat thermometer. Start cooking with an empty dishwasher and fill as you go. Always have a red and a white wine specifically for cooking lying around. Farmer's market produce keeps longer than most other produce. Let your lettuce sit in ice water until you're ready to serve to maximize crunch. If you're keeping part bottles of wine for cooking, add some vodka to keep it from going vinegary. I also keep a liter of Montelado on hand, because it goes with nearly every cuisine. Um. My kids like hard boiled eggs. I only make them in the air fryer now. I haven't had a hard time peeling them since doing this. Deleted. Triangles taste better. It's science, Kenji. If you get eggshells in what you're working with, use another piece of eggshell to extract it out. When someone else is cooking for free don't complain. Clean as you cook, trust me, it's better than a mountain of dishes and utensils at the end. Marinade your meats. No seriously, marinade your meats in something it plays a double team of making your meats both tender and flavorful. No matter what I'm making, be it stew, grilled chicken, or pasta, I like to marinate for anywhere between 30 minutes to 2 days depending on the type of meat and the time I have to do prep. Need to taste the sauce soup? Ladle some into a small spoon, it's easier and cleaner than slurping from your larger cooking utensil. Refrigerate your onions before cutting, I found the eye watering effect is greatly reduced this way. Speaking of onions, saute your onions mushrooms, it brings a much richer flavor to the food. Recipe calls for water? Consider replacing some or all with broth, it adds more flavor, especially with rice. <laughs>